All right. Good morning. It's still morning. Uh, many on parole, we are reconvening. We're at Louisiana Transitional Center for Women. Today is Tuesday, December 14th, 2023. It is 11.37 a.m. With the staff at LTCW, please introduce yourself for the record. Good morning, Latonya Chase, facilitator. Ashla Oliver. All right, that's everybody. Great. Thank you for accommodating us today. And we have Ms. Hiller there yes, in front of us. Would you yes, introduce yourself? Tell us your name and DOC number. My name is Jessica Hiller, and my DOC number is 742498. Yes, that's what we have. Ms. Uh, Ms. Hiller, you're classified as a second felony offender. You're currently serving a five year sentence for. Um, we have, uh, you were sentenced in August 17, uh, excuse me, 2019 for carnal knowledge of a juvenile. That was, you were afforded probation. That was revoked August 17, 2022 for a new felony conviction, which was possession of methamphetamines. Yes. You have a parole eligibility date, which was June the 30th, 2023. You do not earn good time because you're not eligible. You have a full term date, November 1st, 2026. Is all that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Your case has been assigned to Mr. Roche. Um, before I turn it over to him, I want you to know that your uh, your father and your stepmom are here. and Both of them want to speak on your behalf, and we'll ask him to do so at the appropriate time. So um, would you answer any questions Mr. Roche may have? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Ms. Hayden. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. Uh, Ms. Hey, you are currently 37 years old, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you're a second felony offender, and you've served two years on a five year sentence. Is that yes, correct? Sir. That is correct. So tell me exactly why you were incarcerated today. Um, I violated my probation. And um, I got caught with drugs and I failed a drug test. My, I did all, almost all of my probation. Uh, I was going on my three year mark when I messed up. And- Ms. Henry, do you have children? Yes, sir, I have three. You have three children living, yes, living in your home. No, oh, sir. No, 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 your children weren't living in. In a home at the time you were? When I was on probation, yes, yeah. they were living in my home. But okay. now so um, me and their dad divorced, about, so they're not living with me. Uh, at the time you were revoked, mm -hmm. you were living at home yes, sir. with your husband and your three children. Yes, sir. And you had met and other drugs all around the house, in your cosmetic case, in the bathroom, and almost equal 30 grams of meth in your home. So why would you have drugs in a home with minor children? I have no excuses. It's something that's inexcusable. I shouldn't have done it. It was a bad time in my life, but I can't make excuses up for that because I did it. And um, the, I can say the drugs wasn't only my drugs, you know, uh, but I mean, I was the one that was caught with them. So I take full responsibility for it. But let's, I, go, let's go back a couple of years. Why would you invite a 15 year old boy over to play games and watch TV with your children. I never invited him over to do anything with my children. He was okay. an expert neighbor for a while and um, he came and he helped in the yard. He did yard work for us. You know, I never invited him to my house. Okay, so then when he came over to your house, why did you approach him in the way you did? Um, I'm going to be totally truthful with you. I did not. I did not approach him with this. He he came to me with it. He came on to me. He kept on. But that's still not excusable for me. I knew better, and I should have did the right thing, and I didn't. Thank you, Miss Hilliard. 
Uh, let's say, yes, sir. Tell this panel the programs that you've completed since you're incarcerated. Um, they haven't allowed me to do any classes or anything like that because I am flat time and it doesn't count for me, but I was able to do a anger management course through the church when I was in, incarcerated in Concordia. They mm -hmm. had more programs that I was going to do there, but then they transferred me here. Okay, so, so Ms. Hill, you're telling me you have a drug conviction and yep. you are classified as a sex offender. And you have no substance abuse treatment, and you have no sexual uh, sex offender treatment. Is that correct? No, sir. I took uh, the whole time I was on probation, I was in a sex offenders program where I took classes. I attended every class, I made all my payments, I did everything that they asked me. Since, since you've been incarcerated, no, they have not allowed me to take anything. I have requested it. Um, I have the papers where I requested to take I, these. I, papers, I, I, but they I, don't I have those papers too, madam. Okay. Okay. Your flat time five years. You've served only two years, which is insufficient for the magnitude of your offenses, and you have no programming. The reason for incarceration is for rehabilitation. And you have not received any program that will enable you to rehabilitate yourself. So therefore, it's going to be very difficult for me to vote to release you early. And I'm going to make a recommendation that uh, Louisiana Transition Center for Women place you in a substance abuse program. And if there is a sex offender program available, I'm going to request that also. Would you what give me your, the opportunity? What is your, what is your okay. ma'am? I'm conducting this interview, not you. I'm sorry. What is your job assignment at Transition Center for Women? They don't have me working right now. So, what do you do 24 hours a day? Uh, go to church, I read my Bible, and watch TV. I've wrote for jobs. They're just not, they won't allow me to do anything. As of my report, you had no disciplinary write ups. Is that still true? That is true. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Mr. Rushton. We'll hear from your uh, your family members now, Ms. Ms. Hiller. Uh, Ms. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Ms. Tiffany, would you pronounce it for me? Okay, he missed. Okay, yeah, go ahead. If you would step up to the podium and let us, know. yeah, I did say no, I apologize. I did, yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, I would prepare to make a speech, so anyway, so just here I am. As a father, and we follow our children, you know, through their trials and tribulations. I understand her charges, but also understand the make sure uh, her mistress for the uh, uh, adolescent teen. Did I say that mm -hmm. okay. and, and I understand it as a as a male, you know. Um and I also understand sometimes these things as as mothers and grandmothers don't approve. And, you know, and it shouldn't, you know, mistakes are made and it shouldn't be. But it, it kind of gets, you know, thrown about that way. So I won't stand here and make any excuses for her. I just, I know that she was doing everything she was supposed to do. I, I understand that she's had some hard times. Um, but I also understand that in some circumstances that all of these problems is not one side. Um, you know, as soon as she got picked up on this, this new charge, um, her husband found a excuse to have another thing 30 days later. 
Um, he also found the excuse to file the divorce. I mean, just immediately after she was picked up. I, I mean, she was taking care of her job. She, she didn't have a job. That, that was her job, take care of her job. So the support, the, the funding for what she did had to come from someone else. So she, she, I'm not making excuses, but I'm just saying it's just not all her, her duties. You know? So, you know, as a parent, we hope that she gets the, the programs that she needs and that she continues to prosper from that and become a you know adequate part of our society. And, you know, my long term thing is to get her back to be mother. And and when she can do that, you know, the other part of this is we don't get to see our grandkids no more. So maybe she can prosper and be a mother and then she, I can be a grandparent. So that's that that would be the whole thought that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. If, if she, whenever she's eventually released, that would be it to live with you for a while and hold it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she'll work with me. We have some rentals and we do our own work on. So she will come and live with me and we'll try to work through it. Yes, sir. Good deal. All right. Um, let me ask the staff there at, at LTCW, is there any input you can offer for Ms. Hiller? Just a moment, just a moment. I'm getting the, um, I'm getting one of the program coordinators. I didn't want to know if there's any class that you can offer. You have to offer her the computer if that's the thing that you can do. So that you can feel like it's something that they have to do. Yeah. If, uh, what's your name? Jessica Hiller. Okay. I just wasn't aware that she was a sex offender because it wasn't brought to my attention yet. We have a sex offender treatment that we can get her enrolled in. And we can look at what she also qualifies for. That's letter. Letter. No, 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 no. It doesn't say you don't qualify. Did you read yeah. the letter to them mm -hmm. verbatim? They have it. Okay. But it just means that when we get to your treatment time, because there's others with shorter out dates than you that also have to be put in classes, it doesn't mean you won't get in classes. It means we have to also give classes to those that are before you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would encourage you also to ask for a class called Thinking for Change. I think that would be very important to you. Is there anything you want to say to us before we go? Um, just I'm asking y'all to give me an opportunity. I know y'all like for us to take these classes while we're in here, but these classes are also available on the outside. Um, I have taken the sex offenders class. I was enrolled in it the whole time I was on probation and I attended every class. I paid every fee. I did everything I was supposed to do and I was succeeding. I was excelling and I made one mistake and please don't punish me for that one mistake. I think I have, I've been here a long, I've been in jail over two years because of the mistake I made. Just, I'm asking y'all to give me the opportunity. I know I have, even if I do take these classes on the inside, I'm still required to take them when I get out. Um, I still have to do my, I know I have to do my parole. I know I have to do these classes and I take responsibility for that. And I will make sure I show up for every class. Um, just give All me the opportunity right. to do it on the outside, not in here. Well, you might have to see it to believe it, but let's just take a step back for one second and think about what we just saw. We saw a 30-something-year-old woman who was caught really 
what it is is sexually assaulting a 15 year old boy the judge and da give her probation she doesn't even need to serve a day of her sentence is my understanding she violates quickly after 30 grams of meth she shows up at her parole hearing and she states straight up she states that the 15 year old came on to her she wasn't reprimanded for that she wasn't you know i i it, it shouldn't make a difference whether you're a woman or a man it's a 15 year old child what makes her so dangerous why she is such a dangerous cockroach is that she looks so in my opinion innocent sweet almost childlike in nature and that's dangerous now i'm sure on meth she looks a, a lot more like a roach but to think that you send your teenage son to a mother's house with kids to go and play and that the mother then does that to your child she says she gets really just a little tiny tap on the wrist i don't even want to call it a slap and then in her parole hearing blames the victim 15 year old you can't make it up and then you have her father come on gosh that was a I, I couldn't hear it fully, but I think that he started to talk about how, how she's promiscuous or was promiscuous and making excuses for her and talking about grandchildren or something. And it's like, what are you talking about, man? We're talking about, again, a 15-year-old child. It's like we're just totally forgetting about this victim here. And she victim blamed. You only need to flip the genders around to make it very black and white of disgust. And I know some of you don't even need to do that. And it, it, there's, there's, I think it's becoming much more uh, understood that the damage that it does to uh, a 15 year old boy when it's a woman can be just as traumatic and life altering. And for the idea that the judicial system doesn't seem to still see it that way, it's not shocking. We know Louisiana. I mean, we see these things all the time, but you got to see it to believe it. I think, you know, again, and it's still for me, it never ceases to, to, to shock me. Even in her final statements, what does she say? Don't punish me. Yep. I've been in jail for over two years for this. It's like there is no, I, 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 I just, I, I know I'm, I'm a broken record right now, but I'm just so disgusted. By, by this and yeah they denied her parole and then the, the prison not even knowing that she was a sex offender it's like how does that happen you mean someone's in your care for two years your job is to is to know what they're there for and you actually have no shame in publicly stating i didn't know that she was in here for that man look at you know look at where louisiana taxpayers look at what where your taxpayer dollars are going. I hope you're proud. You see my new mic boom? It, it keeps showing up in the screen. And thank you. You know who you are. 
the three of you who bought it for me. I've said a few thank yous and I've written you letters. I hope you got it on buy me a coffee. I when you guys do stuff, I, I write a personal message. I don't know if you get it or not, but I hope you do. Um I write you directly there on a more personal note. But I I there you know it's interesting to say is there a double standard for women in, in male and men and i'm not so sure because we have seen men get similar sentencing it's just that there are more it seems there are more men getting charged so we see a wider range of sentencing much fewer women with these type of charges i don't know if it's a uh if it's you know that we just see fewer sample sizes or if it is um because of the gender bias but it's it was it was it, this was a perfect example of i think a very dangerous very dangerous person that is um that is wearing a disguise and that makes her um, just extraordinarily extra dangerous but yeah, oh, that was what her father went on to say. And, and her husband, blaming it on her husband, and then he ended up using it as an excuse to get a divorce. You don't think uh if she was married at the time, which I you know, when 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 she when when the 15-year-old threw her himself on her, right? It was probably all his fault. That's what she told her husband. That's why he didn't leave her then yet. It's just absurd. The whole thing's nuts. But thank you, uh KG and Survivor, for sending me an email and saying, Mandy, you got to check this out. And thank you, Richard, for um, also letting me know in this spreadsheet to, to check this one. Um, but there you have it. And with that, I'll let you go. 1982, classified as a first felony offender. Offense and decent behavior with a juvenile. Sentencing date, <clears throat> August 27, 2014. Sentenced to a total of 17 years. Parole date is August 22nd, 2021. Good time, not eligible. Full term, August 21st, 2031. Is this information correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Carroll. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson, it seemed like you're having a hard time hearing, huh? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm I'm partially hard of hearing. Uh, oh, being okay. Bouncing. Okay. All righty. Okay. So I, they, I'm see they got the they got it. Um, uh, they got the volume up as best they can do. I'll do what I can to speak loudly. How are you this afternoon? All right, ma'am. Uh, tell me why, in your own words, why are you in jail? I'm in jail. Because one, the cousin, my cousin, uh, her daughter, come across. I was in, uh, at her house, living, trying to help her. Unfortunately, I left my uh, uh, I left my cell phone uh, laying around. Unfortunately, I had no password on it. Come to find out, over time, the daughter went into my cell phone and found stuff she was not supposed to find. Uh, unfortunately, I was uh, given lip about that, and from that point on, I kept my cell phone always on me at all times. Uh, I'm, and she's been around while I've been speaking to other other relatives around her. Huh? Uh, not uh, appropriate conversation, you might say. Okay, okay, okay. And, and you was not appropriate conversations, uh, and what was on your cell phone was not appropriate for young people. You were yes, saying, okay, okay, and and uh, for that, the courts gave you a seventeen year sentence. And That's how long? Hmm? And how long have you served on this seventeen year sentence? Uh, roughly combined with Benjamin Parish and Boyle's Parish, eight years, four months and a half. Eight years, four months and a half. Okay, so what programs have you had in these eight years and four months? Unfortunately, the only things I've been doing is uh, take not 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 
non-denomination uh, church services, which was okay. uh, from 2016 to 2019, which they ended. And I've been yeah. a trip from 2015 all the way to now in the kitchen. Uh, what, do you board, do? what do you do in the kitchen? Uh, I've been, let's see, I've been the scullery man. I've been the pots, uh, what? Scholar man, I've been uh, storeroom, storeroom worker, and storeroom clerk. Uh, oh, okay. Basically okay. a truck loader responsible okay. for all the stuff that is inventoried and stuff. And then I've been in pots and pans. Okay, I, I remember reading that now. Okay, okay. But so before his programs, uh, you haven't had an opportunity to take any DLC programs? No, ma'am. I have tried to, uh, but the then, uh, this is DLC transit specialist, Miss, Mrs. Katie Long. I tried mm -hmm. to get I tried to get a class with her. Come to find mm -hmm. out over time, she only gave it to people who have two years or less. Okay. Uh, I tried again. Then uh, sometime a little after that, before the uh, COVID nineteen epidemic uh, happened, I found out that you know uh, the four facilities. Uh, you found out what now? That four facilities named uh, Wind Correctional Center, Dixon Correctional Institute, Rayburn Correctional Center, and Hunt Correctional Center had uh, a class called uh, Sex Offender Treatment Class. Mm -hmm. I tried to, uh, I sent geographical, trans mail ge geographical transfers to all four of the facilities. Unfortunately, nothing, no, re no response back to any of them. I was unsuccessful. Oh, good, I, good. I, I like to hear that you did what you could do. Mm -hmm. uh, then, unfortunately, then, unfortunately, the COVID-19 epidemic hit, and then I come to try again. Unfortunately, I couldn't because the restrictions prevented any new uh, any inmates from transferring facility to facility. So That's I cool. tried, and while there in that time, I tried again to get classes here with the then now uh, DLC transit transit specialist Miss uh, Anderson. Well, I sent a piece of the paper uh, that has. Well, Okay, then we, we, uh, you, you've established that. That's good. I, yeah. I'm well aware of, of what was going on. The, uh, we were in a pandemic. I'm well aware. So uh, good job on that. And now, roughly, you, indicate, you indicated your occupation is disabled. What is the nature of your disability? Just, well, just in general terms. Some hearing loss. Okay. Anything uh, else? Uh, uh, some... I can I can see, but unfortunately, without my glasses, I'm 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 what's it called near side. I can't see far distance. Okay, okay. Uh, I, uh, were, you, uh were you receiving uh, SSI benefits? Oh no, uh, no. Uh, uh, I come to find out uh, through the uh, law library man that I can apply uh, ex felons can apply for SSI benefits under uh emotional instability huh uh, yeah i saw that i saw that in, i saw that in, in your packet um yeah that's something that's been flying around for a lot of years so my question though was um i guess i phrased it another way how were you supporting yourself uh before you came to jail i oh, see uh last i remember i was working as a uh oh uh what do you call it uh, ele uh electrical electrician's apprentice Okay, well, that's a good. Okay, that's a that's a good occupation. That's a real good occupation. Uh, 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 let me inform you of, of some things. Uh, as a part of this process, we reach out to the law enforcement community where you were convicted to get their opinion about early release. And there's been some oppositions. There have been some uh, opposition expressed, and uh, uh, the, there's somebody from the victims here, so I, uh, they'll have their say in, in a little bit. Uh, uh, I do want to. Uh, we haven't done a sex offender uh, assessment on you, but our other risk assessment shows that you are low. So that's good. You are at low risk. But here are some things that concern me. Uh, you, you, you put down that you want to be a truck driver and you want to do work in the IT field. As a sex offender, those are the two fields you cannot work in. Okay. You cannot do and And of course, then you changed it and you said you was going to try, you know, you're going to try for social security disability. So we don't well, know that, how that, 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 go. that was going to, that was the, uh, help me deal my feet until I can find employment. That's right. That's I, I saw that. I, I did. I see that. I see that. Uh, going forward, uh, what would you do differently going forward to avoid this happening again? 
keep everything uh no go on any kind of inappropriate sites uh keep my cell phone always with me make sure it's protected at all times uh pass wherever wherever password i gotta put on it make sure nobody touch uh keep okay. myself keep myself busy uh try to have a goal in mind uh, try to uh make sure i do something to contribute something uh, uh something i can have a future for uh, something a life a future something yeah okay something. good sound like you thank you i didn't mean to cut you off but we uh we got some, a lot of speakers here but thank you I, uh sounds like you done thought about it you don't thought about it appreciate that do we have any other questions from the panel i, I have i have a question madam okay. chairman <clears throat> mr johnson uh, what i'm i'm hearing you say is that your only crime was that you didn't have a good password and these young children were able to get on your phone those aren't really the allegations now you're telling me you didn't have any involvement in this they simply picked up your phone and got into your phone and looked at this pornography and, and you didn't have any interactions with them because that's not what the reports seem to suggest. So tell me what your involvement was. I was a giant teacher a thing, a class basically, or what do you call it? Uh, no, no, no. What was your involvement with these young children? Is all they did, is, is what you're saying, all they did, was pick up your telephone and get to your password and you had pornography on there you didn't you didn't show them that you weren't involved in that at all is that what i'm hearing you say i didn't have no password on it i, did, I didn't figure nobody would touch myself well i hear you I, I'm, I'm understanding that so what you're saying is you didn't have anything to do with them seeing this they happened to get hold of your phone and saw it you didn't explain it to them you didn't show it to them you didn't discuss it with them is that what you're saying no sir i was even surprised they were able to figure out my cell phone so what you're saying is is you you pled guilty to these charges i pled guilty because i saw i thought i was going to lose because i've heard people who've had these kind of charges they even they 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 didn't lose they didn't win even if they somehow even somehow beat it, their life was ruined. Uh, I thought I, I was so scared. I thought I was going to lose, so I was willing to willing to plead guilty just to get lesser so, charge. So what I'm hearing you say is that your cell phone was accessible to them. They got the cell phone. They looked at all of this part. Two different people looked at all of this pornography and suggested that you talk to them about it and you're saying all oh, that's a lie they just picked it up and it was a uh in the wrong place at the wrong time is that you is that what you're saying now i was for the other one uh uh bert his son he has he had internet he had un un unfiltered internet he was doing gaming all kind of stuff he was constantly checking the internet without his parents checking to see what he was checking out you had no discussion with him you didn't talk to him about sex or anything like that no sir yet you pled guilty to 15 years in prison i didn't know it was i thought it was going to be a lot less because the way that the they made it seem like it was going to be not much i was scared i wasn't thinking i all i knew from prior experience with other people had this their life was ruined or they lost just to be accused of this all right i i understand thank you mr johnson thank you mr thank you, uh, Madam Chair. thank you mr mayor bell uh mr Teresa. we will now hear from the support side first uh, we'll start with, with miss phyllis johnson who's the mother Ms. Johnson, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Ms. Johnson, you're on mute. I can, okay, my name's Phyllis Johnson. 
I'm Joe's mom. I'm in support of him getting out. Uh, he has a safe place to come home to. Um, um, I've saved money for him to go back to school for what is approved, and we will find out what is approved. And um, uh, I'll help in every, any way I can. And uh, we have a big family, a big support system, even our pastor. And um, so um, I'll do anything I can to help him, and I'll be there for him. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from Ms. Sharon Dickey, who's the aunt, who's at the same location as Ms. Ellis. You're back on mute. You are on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm Sharon Dickey and I'm speaking on behalf of Joseph Johnson. Yeah. Joseph is my nephew. Um, I'm here to express my support for his release. Joseph has a family support and all throughout his incarceration, we have supported him and visited him when we was allowed to. Um, Joseph will have family support upon his release. He also has housing set up with a secure home to come home to. We will help him with employment and if to go back to school, to find a trade that he's allowed to, you know, to have a trade in. You know, there's a lot of things that we're going to have to figure out, but we will definitely go through the process and figure those out. Um, Joseph is 100% remorseful for his actions, and Joseph is a good person. We miss him and we want him home. Um, Joseph has served uh, eight years of his time, and I know he's reflected and and on his past mistakes and in, in conversations with myself, he has been very truly remorseful in a lot of, in, in his actions. Joseph has a very supporting and loving family that will be through his release and introduction back to society. We will take every possible step to gather support and aid in his release from prison. And we will uh, just be by his side 100% and help him go through the process, getting um put his name in the paper and getting registered and going through all the process and get with his parole officer. So we will definitely be by his side 100% um, to help him uh, through this process. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We will now hear from the opposition side. We will start with Ms. Pamela Burke. I'm going to read this a white family bird. My name is Pamela and Robert Bird. We represent our son in this matter. My wife and I both agree that he <clears throat> should not be released and was sentenced to 70 years, but has only served just a portion of, the, of his time. We feel this is not enough time for him to serve because he has inflicted pain and suffering on our family, which we have to live with daily. He should not be released because we once lived within a, the same community. We fear <clears throat> we, we fear he would be re returned to this area, which is within five mile radius of our home. We do not feel safe with his release, his sentence should be served. We uh, we really appreciate y'all being here today. I know this was difficult. Thank y'all for participating in the process. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for thank taking you. time to hear our message. Thanks. Now we have Ms. Catherine Kowalski, who is also at that location. I am here today to say I am against this early release. I am the only one that can protect my child. My husband passed away last year. And if he was here today, he would be standing and supporting everything I have to say. The reason I am against it is because he did the crime and he should serve his full sentence. For one, this will protect my child and anyone else's child or children for as long as possible. The fear that this man has put in our lives will never go away. 
I understand that if he has good behavior, he can be released. But when, but he didn't have good behavior when he was a civilian. He made the decision to do what he did. So he should serve the time he was given. My child is still a child. And I was told he would not be released until she was grown. Mm. And I was still, he took my child's innocence when she was just four years old. He made her do sexual acts on him. He can say what he wants, but a four-year-old doesn't lie. And I know my child doesn't lie. We live in a small town. We're all family. His mother is my aunt. He is my cousin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know that was hard. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Catherine's mother. Is there anything you want to tell us? Yes, ma'am. We're all family. She took him in when he was. When he was no longer welcome in his own home with his parents. And he lived here and he did those things and he should serve his time. And he spoke of her. They spoke of remorse. He did not. It didn't remorse to me. And I don't want it. She's still a child and needs protecting. And just thank you for hearing our side. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, I put your uh put it on mute now for us. Thank you. All right. Ms. Ms. Teresa, that's all the speakers? Yes, ma'am. Is the panel ready to vote? Uh, I'll vote first. I'll vote first because the case was assigned to me. Uh, Ms. Mr. Johnson, uh, my vote is to deny uh, because of the law enforcement opposition, the victim's opposition has been expressed, um, and the need uh, for the uh, sex offender treatment program, although I acknowledge that you know, you did what you could to get the get it, but you have not. And I will make a notation that uh, I don't know if we get you, get it anywhere that you get moved to a facility where you get that treatment that you need uh, prior to release. But my, but my vote is to deny it today, Mr. Roche. Mr. Roche. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Fries. Good afternoon, Mr. Jones. There's a couple of reasons why I've come to the decision that I've come to. First of all, you were not truthful today. You didn't tell us exactly what happened. And you didn't take any responsibility for harming an innocent child. After family takes you in, you abuse their children. And you didn't take any responsibility for that today. Secondary reasons that I'm denying you is you have total legal community opposition. The sentencing judge, the DA's office, the sheriff's office, the chief of police, the victim's family is adamantly opposed, and you have no sex offender treatment. I think you had a lot to do where you are located and you chose to be comfortable instead of getting rehabilitated. I think you need to get with the facility, Get them to contact the proper facilities so you can get the proper programming 
so that you can be on your way to rehabilitation. You can appear before this committee 10 times. If you don't have the prerequisite programming, you will get the same results. You understand? Thank you, Ms. Wise. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Uh, Mr. Mayor Bell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, I, I echo everything that my colleagues have said. Uh, I'm not sure, frankly, if you have some mental health issues that need to be resolved. Uh, I'm not sure if you are just unwilling uh, in front of all of us to admit and concede what you did. Uh, I understand that's a possibility. Uh, it sounds like from your supported family that you have accepted responsibility to them for something. Today, you didn't accept responsibility for anything other than not having a password on your phone. And, and maybe even suggested blaming the young boy for having access to his own computer. That is what sex offender treatment and training perhaps can assist you with. Uh, I think you also need to take classes in victim awareness, what you have done to these young children, what your mm -hmm. actions have done to them. Uh, I'm not sure why you can't accept that responsibility. And you tell me you didn't do any of this, yet you pled guilty and are serving a 15 year sentence. I'm a lawyer, been a lawyer for a long time, was a judge for a long time. I understand those things happen. People plead guilty sometimes to what they didn't do. Uh, but wow, to accept a 15 year sentence, that's a long time to go to prison for something that you didn't do. So I believe like Mr. Rocha, you weren't perfectly honest with us today. Uh, I'm gonna encourage you to do your very best to get into sex offender program. You've tried, you, you, you've written some letters, continue to do that until you can get into the program. Uh, because if you come before us and I'm on this board again in the same circumstances, my vote will likely be exactly the same and that's to deny you. So good luck to you, sir. Okay, so uh, today, uh, Mr. Johnson, you've gotten three votes to deny uh, early release. So parole has been denied today. Best wishes to you, sir. This concludes our business at Avoids. Thank y'all so much for accommodating us. We appreciate it. It's 1.21 p.m. Uh, this hearing was on, you just, you just left with my jaw just hanging open 17 it was a 17 year sentence mr mirabella was misquoting seven he got a 17 year sentence for 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 um molestation of a juvenile right and he goes through the hearing now at, at the beginning you know he miss wise asked him what he did and he he gives this whole thing about the phone and she responds, oh, okay, 17 years for, for not locking your phone. And I thought that was, you know, I actually kind of laughed about that. Her, uh, I think that was one of the few times I appreciated that, that her approach in that situation. But then I became upset again when I don't find out that it was a four-year-old girl until the victim's mother speaks. A four-year-old girl doesn't lie. And how can you get through a parole hearing like that and just not pin him to the wall and hold him accountable and say, no, that's not why you're here. Don't say that to us. You're here for what you did to those children. And Mr. Mirabella wasn't just the boy. It wasn't just a child. It's children. They take him into their home. And it sounded like one of the victims was telling when she was giving her speech, like trying to get her to for some, you know, change her what she was saying. Or 
about inviting him into their home. And yeah, I mean, you, you just, and then he, he goes through the interview also as if he has maybe like an intellectual disability, but he counters that by saying that he's an electrician's apprentice. I mean, I don't think you can be an electrician's apprentice and have a low IQ in the way that he was playing it off. I think it's all part of manipulation. He thinks he's so clever he can play dumb or something. I don't know. I have... What's your disabilities? Oh, I have poor hearing and and woe is me. I, I, I can't see far without my glasses on. Okay. He insists over and over. All I did was not lock my phone. I've learned my lesson to lock my phone. You're just insulting. Every, I mean, think about having to listen to someone Say that. And to not have anyone else really. That's what I'm locked up. Oh, I just pled guilty. I was afraid. I was totally innocent. Though. All I did do was not lock my phone. And then he goes on to say that the boy had a computer and unfiltered access to the Internet and it playing games. And it's like. Shame on you. These monsters exist. We see them. And we see all different levels. So this one is just... To think that he's is going to be free when it, hopefully he doesn't get out until his full term in 2031. Which is another... Was that seven years about from today's date? But he's young. So what does that really mean? What's gonna happen when he gets out? You know, we don't have any other information on this case because he took a plea deal. But he'll be under 50 years old when he gets out. That is a long time to hurt children. A long time. Where's the DA for this case, right? I never get bored of asking. You think they might show up to represent the families that were hurt by this? That were, you know, you hear the mother say a four year old doesn't lie. No, four-year-olds do not lie. But that cockroach lies. Kick the ball down the road. You know, they had phones, they had all they had data trails, they had all this. They sh for this type of thing, DA's gotta say, you know what? And 17 years, that is a lot for these cases we have seen. We have seen. We have seen everything. Sadly, we have seen from probation to just a few years. And but in my opinion, he's still you gotta imagine letting him back out. You gotta go for you gotta take these these roaches to trial and you gotta give them life. You you can't. Rehabilitate this, and you cannot guarantee by any stretch of the imagination that they won't reoffend when they get out. And how can you take that chance? How can you roll the dice and take that chance? But it is, it is what it is, and you might not believe it if you didn't see it. This is astonishing. Sick. Well, this hearing took place in 2021, and he's probably going to come up sometime soon, and we'll cover it when he does. 
Let's move to the next hearing. Or classified as a first felony offender, offense, forceful rape, sentencing date, December 17, 2012, sentence to 12 years hard labor. Parole date is January 30th, 2016, good time, not eligible, full term, February 1st, 2024. Is this information correct? All right, we have another staff uh, member joining us here, Captain uh, Smith. Morning. Good morning, thank you. Mr. Travis, is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. All right, thank you. All right, since the staff is in there, can y'all go ahead and tell us how Mr. Travis been doing at your facility? Yes, ma'am. Um, since I've been working here, Travis has worked beautifully as a uh, kitchen worker and as an auto shop uh, mechanic. And I haven't seen or heard any um, any ill news of Travis since he's been working here, which has been at what, two different points in time? Yes, sir. Uh, during his uh, stint as an inmate, he had been here earlier and then he had had to transfer down to which facility? Ridgewood. Ridgewood and came back here after a set amount of time. Yeah, okay, I see that, I see that. And you said he's a kitchen worker and an auto mechanic. He worked both well, of those he, jobs. He, he was a kitchen worker until he became uh, one of the auto shop mechanics. All right, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Travis. Uh, ma'am? Go ahead. I was just gonna tell you, ma'am, he worked a year ago, I'm sorry, I've been left what? out. <laughs> he, uh, he worked for me or worked with me uh, a year ago for a for a whole for a year uh always was an exemplary inmate uh, did what was asked of him did it cheerfully and never never gave me any trouble or anything that i ever i ever ran into and, and uh, when he was working for you sir what was his job uh where he worked for me occasionally he wasn't under me but on, from time to time i would use him uh this was when he worked in the uh i was over a work crew that went out and did a lot of mowing I've moved on now and I'm over the uh, civil department paper service now. Uh, and he, that, that, for that year, he worked with me uh, out there at the, uh, I did cut grass and things like that. I took a work crew out. He worked in the same building that I was stationed in. Oh, good. Well, thank you for taking time to be here for him. Yes, ma'am. That's good. That's good. We don't see, you don't see that very often. Uh, uh, Travis, um, when we read your offense, when we actually read the scenario around the around the offense, what was going on with you on February the twelfth of twenty twelve? Ma'am, uh, I'm not lying. Let drugs. What drugs up. were? It? What drugs was it? I was doing bath salts, and I was smoking crack at the time. Yes, ma'am. I let drugs overrun my ability to think right, and I just was in his right stage of mind at that time in my life, ma'am. How long had you been using drugs? At that point, I was about three years. I was using drugs, about three, three and a half years. Okay, okay. What is your plan to stay clean and sober if you're released today? I have a strong support system. My mom, my brother, some good friends. And I got my babies. I've lost 10 years of my life and I don't have no plans on using no drugs. I made a promise to God. I have no want nor need to do any kind of drug. Uh, so call out for us. How long have you served? Uh, I've been down about nine years, 10 months, ma'am. Nine years and 10 months. Okay. What drug treatment programs have you taken? I did Celebrate Recovery. Okay. NAAA meetings, mm -hmm. two, three, two or three certificates and classes. They were three months apiece. Okay. And um, mass mind offering substance abuse. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I think that's what the program with the drugs considered with drugs. I also mm -hmm. took parenting and anger management. Okay. Okay. But I, uh, but you know, uh, 
for me, for my vote, I want to make sure that I am not letting a rapist out who's going to go out and rape again. That's that's my concern. Ma'am, it was a one-time mistake, and I love my family too much, my mom, and I just can't. I've lost too much things that I've took for granted out there in the world. I'm not that same man. I've done right, but you, but but you realize now, you know, you you only got charged with one of the rape, but there was an attempted rape that day, and then an actual rape. Yes, ma'am. And it was her and her 19 year old daughter was at the house, and they just charged me with the, the forcible rape. Now, the, uh, they weren't just at the house. I mean. You did some planning. You told them you need to come and do some cleaning. You did some planning. Yes, ma'am. Like I, it was just a horrible mistake. And I yeah, you, I mean, mistake. yeah, it, it it wasn't a, a happenstance. You planned. Yes, ma'am. It was your first attempt, right? You had, you know, you had planned, you know, a, 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 a discover, you know, you had to you had to develop a way to be get close to her. Yes, ma'am. That's 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 concerning. That's concerning to me that even though you were on the influence of drugs, uh, your thinking was, you know, was quite calculated. Um, so, uh, so uh, tell me this. Do you think that you could benefit from a long term substance abuse program before you go home? I believe I've done uh, uh, enough programs to have benefited me in the last nine years, 10 months. And I've done other programs, you know, outside of just drug programs. Okay, okay. So the answer is no. No, you don't think you need that. No, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. I, I do want to, uh, and thank you for your honesty. I appreciate that. Uh, I do want to inform you as as a part of this process, we reach out to the law enforcement community to get their opinion about early release, and there is opposition from the law enforcement community, complete opposition. Uh, they're not in favor of you getting out early. And I just think it's important that you know that I do want to acknowledge on the record that uh, we, you got a letter of support from the retired warden from your facility that spoke very well of you. And I just wanted to state that for the record. Uh, thank you for answering my question. That's all I had, Chairman. Okay, at this time, I see you have a speaker, Mr. Kurt James. Yes, I mean, that's my uncle. Yeah, if you would, unmute your mic, Mr. James. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so anything you'd like to say to the board? If y'all would mute his mic, let's go to Dennis. And, uh, Mr. James, can you hear us? Mr. James, can you hear us? If y'all would, let's go to the speakers, Dennis and Jamie, the family, and go ahead and mute him out because I guess he can hear us so we can go to the next speaker. Dennis, if you would, unmute your mic. Dennis, unmute your mic. Okay, go ahead. Okay, pretty much I want to back up what he said. Um, it's a one-time thing. He's in a totally different world now that he's coming home to. He's got home to come to. He's got his own room upstairs. He's going to be with me and his mom. He's going to be helping to take care of us. His own, the, the friends that he had at that time had done moved off where wherever they're at so I've, i mean i want to say this but i mean if i had a one percent chance that he's gonna do this again i would say heck no but i believe he has too much he lost already that that he, he can screw up again and that he, we got everything he needs here we got a car waiting for him if he needs it we got a room upstairs and I know that he didn't take all those classes for nothing. Well, that's me. And and he he's a good man, and you guys done really great with him because I love him, and and he has improved 
and he he lost his daddy here a while back then, and he he lost his kids. He's not gonna do anything to make things worse. He's a good man now. When he went in, he was a boy. He is a man now. And and I feel with all my heart and all my soul, he will do good and make you proud, the other lady proud, and make everybody that talk good about him proud. Okay. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, I don't think we can get a hold of Mr. James there. Uh, I don't know what the problem was, some kind of problem there. Uh, Mr. James, do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. You want to leave your statement? Uh, I, I'm going to make it short and quick. Uh, he does have family support. Uh, he does have a safe home environment. Uh, there is financial help that I can give him if, you know, while he's looking for work and stuff. And, um, other than that, I won't take up your time, but thank you for your concern and uh, let me speak my short piece. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dane. Uh, at this time, uh, is anything, Mr. Redford, anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? I would like to say I would really appreciate you, y'all, if you would. I plan on going to church, going to celebrate recovery with my ex warden in Halton, Louisiana. First Baptist, he's told me about his church and they will get me and celebrate recovery. And um, so I can stay on track and make sure with my support system that everything goes right with me. I thank y'all. Thank you very much. At this time, Ms. Pearl Wise will be voting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Travis, I heard well, 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 we didn't hear from the treatment director of the sex offender treatment unit i want to hear what he has to say sure um uh offender rexford is not in uh treatment at this time due to covid uh and where we house the people who are um in the in the, the auto shop you cannot do both because we can't mix those dorms and afford shutting anything down um treatment is certainly available to him for either program either steve Hoyle or um, the sex offender unit, and and we do offer um, a track for for both. If you are in the sex offender unit, um, that sex offender program is a full year. If you if somebody was to complete the full thing, and uh, Steve Hoyle is six months, um, but so that is available. But he is not currently in it uh, because of the housing situation. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Pearl Wiseby Bodie. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Travis, uh, I, I know you 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 believe what you said that that you got it. I, I know you believe that, and you have been clean and sober. And I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, and I'm only one vote. Uh, and I want you to trust my wisdom on this. And this is something I don't usually do, but because of all this community su support you have around you, I I, I think that. Uh, and the staff, all the positive things the staff have said about you, I'm gonna take a chance on you. In that my vote is to grant after you complete a long-term substance abuse treatment program. Uh, we, you have nine months after we get through. After we when we grant when we grant you, that's if my, you know, that's if you get granted. Uh, so whatever you can get in nine months, I like for you to get moved from where you are and move to a dorm where you can get some treatment. You don't know what you don't know. You, you really don't. But somebody be on drugs for three years and did that much of mayhem, uh, you need some tools and you don't have them. And it was disappointing for me to hear you say, I completed AANA, but on your release plan, you didn't mention I'm gonna go to AANA to stay sober. That, that's concerning. Uh, so my vote is to grant after you complete a long-term substance abuse program, and they will give you a recommend, they will give you a release summary of what you should do. And I ask that you do it and uh, you'll be a sex offender. So all the sex offender registration mandates are automatically a condition of your supervision. Uh, that, that comes with that, it comes as a condition. And the probation parole do random drug screens uh, over your entire period of supervision. That is my vote, sir.
Uh, Ms. Jackson. Mr. Rexford, uh, I'm really disturbed about a lot about your case, and I'm really disturbed how you've minimized your action. You attempted to rape and commit sexual offenses against three different women. You were allowed to plead guilty to one count, but this is not a one-time incident. There was an Elizabeth Coker on a totally separate incident where you attempted to rape her and being unsuccessful, you committed a sexual battery. You have not undergone any sexual uh, offender treatment. And then there's the Allison Scarborough individual that you were stalking. And the only word that I can use to describe you is creepy. And so I have no desire to see you on the street. You're fortunate that you only got a 12 year sentence given the wide range of sexual offenses you have committed against uh, other people. And you've accepted no responsibility and you've had no treatment. And so my vote today is to deny you uh, for lack of sex offender treatment and because of the seriousness of the offense. Ma'am, can I say something? No, sir, you cannot. At this time, the ward is voting. At this time, I'm gonna vote to deny because you need to complete those, all four phases of sex offender treatment. After you get them completed, you can write back. Thank you very much. Board decision was to deny your parole. That concludes our hearings at 1048. I can't finish it. Can I say something? Ma'am, no, you cannot say something. No, you cannot. What? Oh my gosh! Another mic drop by Miss Jackson, and all I can say is thank you, Miss Jackson. Thank you, thank you. I, I have a special place in my heart for judge bonnie jackson she is you know there's a she 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 really has an incredible um i guess you call it a resume and she's always worked for public office they said you know after she had worked as a as a defense attorney and and as a judge and a public defender, she could have left and, and become a partner of a big firm and made a lot of money. And she never did that. That's just not not her her interest. Um, man, that was powerful. The only words I can use to describe you is creepy. Mic drop. I'm I I, I I'm convinced that. Miss Wise isn't really paying attention, even when she's conducting the interview, to to allow for parole and and only ask for substance abuse and it, it, programs. It's not. I I don't know. Um. He's clearly a danger to society, and it's a crime that he only got. 12 years. We'll go over the information Richard put together for us. And it's as bad as Miss Jackson said. It's worse. It goes, it gets, you know, I'll, I'll give a graphic content warning. Um, because it, it's it's and you know, if, if if I have to say it's bad, it's pretty bad, right? Um Gosh, the idea that that a DA, uh, we got to get Miss Jackson j back on the bench because the, what's going on in Louisiana is just crazy. So, following a jury trial, by the way, this is a jury trial. This is he didn't take a plea deal, okay? So all the excuses of plea deals and to not put people on the stand. No, he had a jury trial. He was convicted. 
He was charged now with six separate counts involving three different women, right? The state, however, they chose to just try him on one count. You would think, okay, well, one count, they're going to pick the strongest count. Maybe they'd give him the, uh, the, the biggest, the maximum sentence. But no, they gave him 12 years. First two years to be served without benefit of parole. That means he was allowed to get out possibly after serving just two years. Why? You spent the money. You put the jury there. You had to make, you had to fight him. And then when the jury says guilty, you give 12 years? Make that make sense. If you're wondering about the statute, here it is. Whoever commits forcible, right, should be in prison, not less than five, right? They, they minimum, they do give a minimum of five, which is just nuts. Because they just think about that. You are doing to someone. You are taking something from someone. You are damaging someone. Not to mention the the maybe the diseases you can pass along and all those different things. If how is the minimum five years? How who writes this stuff? But not more than forty. Again, why is it not more than forty? Okay. So they say because it because maybe it wasn't uh, um, aggravated, right? So aggravated, you can get life. So this is not more than forty. But th the judge could have gave him forty, but no, he didn't. And remember, <laughs> well, I'm like he he could have for three different women was what they could have, but no. Okay, so we can't make sense of it. We don't understand. We but we know that that there is something broken with this judge. Now here's the facts of the case. On February first, two thousand and twelve, the thirty-six year old victim and a nineteen year old daughter were at home several houses down the street where the defendant lived. Now, Mr. Kenneth Washington was, okay, so I don't know who Kenneth Washington, Kenneth Washington was the daughter's boyfriend. Okay, so Kenneth knew the defendant who would occasionally pay Kenneth to do yard work. So the defendant would pay the daughter's boyfriend to do yard work. Now, at times, JL would go to the defendant's house with Kenneth. So that's the, the, the daughter would go to the house with her boyfriend. The victim testified that she had never met, never been to the defendant's house or met the defendant before February 1st. But that she believed he was a good person based on the things her daughter had told her. So the mom said she was never there, but believed that he was okay because her daughter would go there on february 1st 2012 the defendant came to the victim's house looking for kenneth so the defendant wanted her boyfriend to come and do yard work the defendant was told that kenneth was at work so the defendant then asked the daughter if she wanted to make extra money doing housework for him she agreed and asked her mother to come with her now here's this sub note Richard put in the comments. Make sure, man, do check this out. And on March 29, 2012, Rexford was charged a bill of information with one, forcible of DL, two, attempted aggravated, which would, I believe, um, be a life sentence. I'm not 100% sure. But, and then attempted aggravated of jail as well. Aggravated battery of jail, attempted aggravated um sexual assault and sexual battery of ec now ec is not mentioned in this document um but that is the third victim the bill alleges that all three crimes all occurred on february 1st 2012. it was only one it was only one event he says uh, it was just this one time thing his family support with miss wise says because of your support i'll let you out are you kidding me i'm not picking on i i, I just 
I just don't understand how she could have voted for him in this case. I don't, I don't. The trial, the jury trial, which was only on one count, again, the jury trial only on one count, and they found them guilty, and they gave him 12 years. I can't get over that. Now, when the two women got to the defendant's house, his wife, Danielle Rexford, was leaving in her vehicle. He's married, mind you, right? So, you know, this isn't a thing where what he paints it out to be like a sketchy thing. The daughter's boyfriend works for him. He's married. He has kids. The defendant's 15-month-old daughter and five-month-old son were in the house, mind you. The defendant directed the two women to a room in the back of the house and told them to fold baby clothes that were scattered all over the floor. As they were doing so, the defendant's daughter kept walking past the door. So the one and a half year old, I guess. But defendant made her go back towards the front of the house. A couple of minutes later, the defendant came back into the room and hit jail on the back of the head with a stick. This is when the assault begins. Jail testified that the defendant hit her real hard with the dull end of the stick and that her back hurt for a couple of weeks. Both the victim and her daughter described the stick as a wooden club with a nail attached to the end of it with duct tape. It's like a medieval. Are you kidding me with duct tape? Can you just think of this club with the nail sticking out of it fastened with duct tape that he uses now to assault this mother and this daughter with his two infant children in the home. Creepy. Bath salts and crack, he blames it on. I mean, bath salts will do crazy things to you, but I, I actually have a hard time believing that he was that hopped up on bath salts and crack if they would have felt safe going there. Both women testified that the defendant then pushed them and they ended up sitting on the floor side by side against the wall. The defendant was standing over them with a stick over their heads and said, I'm going to beat you B words to death. If you scream, if you try to run, I'll beat you to death and I'm going to make you suck my, he says. The mother told the defendant that he could do whatever he wanted to her if he would let the daughter go. But the defendant refused because once he was done with the mother, the daughter was going to be next. The victim performed oral on the defendant while he was still holding the stick over her head with her daughter sitting next to or lying under her. The victim tried to put her hands over her daughter's eyes. The defendant ejaculated in the victim's mouth. The victim then, okay, I'm just, um, at that point, the defendant told them to get up off the floor to go into another room and said, uh, I mean, he, um, I'm going to sexually assault both of you B words, he told them. And if, if they, you know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, if they ran or screamed, he was going to, to again, kill them. As they were walking to the next room, the victim, think, you know, God bless them, took off running and made it out of the house, followed shortly thereafter by her daughter. The victim then called the police and the woman waited for officers to arrive. The victim testified that one of her shoes came off while she was running out of the house, and the daughter testified that she lost one of her earrings in the house when the defendant had them pinned down. The victim testified that what defendant made her do was the most disgusting and embarrassing thing that had ever happened to her. She was worried about STDs and had an AIDS test run at the local emergency room the same day. She testified that nothing about what the defendant did to her was consensual. There was no discussion. Remember, she's testifying. She's taking the stand. They put her on the stand. 12 years. 12 years, judge. The two women went to the defendant's house to do housework, and the only money they discussed was payment was for cleaning services. The victim's daughter testified the defendant did not mention $200 
or any specific monetary amount when he came to her house and the defendant never offered her or her mother money for sex. She testified that the defendant forced her mother to perform. Don Willis, a lieutenant with the Webster Parish Office, testified that he was dispatched to the defendant's house in connection with the incident. When he arrived, he saw the two women in the vacant lot next to. So in the opening statements, he he claimed, this was his defense, he claimed that he um, had paid them for oral. Defendant's house, Willis stated that they were screaming, distraught, disheveled, and shaken up. Lieutenant Willis testified as to what the two women told him happened, which was consistent with their trial testimony. Lieutenant Willis testified that he went to the defendant's home, arrested him, and searched the house. Lieutenant Willis located the daughter's earrings and the mother's shoe in the defendant's house and found the stick slash club, the medieval assault club, underneath the back porch of the house. Lieutenant Willis identified the club introduced into evidence as one of he found underneath the defendant's porch. Lieutenant Willis stated that he did not take any pictures of the daughter's injuries because there were no marks, bruises, or cuts, and she received no medical treatment for the injury to her back. Lieutenant Willis secured several items, including the shirt that her daughter had been wearing during the assault. They were taken to the crime lab for processing. Uh, Jennifer Irving, a detective, testified as a finding in the crimes report. The report confirmed that the suspect's DNA was on there. Now, the defendant, our good old boy, testified on his behalf. At the time of the incident, he was 27 years old. and worked in the oil field, so he was making good money. He testified that on February 1st, 2012, he went to the victim's house to see if Kenneth wanted to do some yard work for him. When he was told that Kenneth was not there, the defendant told JL that if she did some housework for him, which he claimed was supposed to be a surprise for his wife, wow, he was such a good guy, surprise, huh? he would pay her $200, and she agreed. At his house, defendant stated that after he told both women what he wanted them to do, the mother remarked that 200 was a lot of money to do such a little amount of cleaning. He agreed. <laughs> this is his, what he, his testimony. This is what he thought the jury would believe. He had them come. He said, I'll pay you 200 I'm surprising my wife. They said, don't pay us 200 That's That's a lot of money for, for all the work, for, for the work you want to do. And he's like, yeah, you know, that is a lot of money. So, and the mother asked the defendant if he wanted more. You know, she's like, do you want us to do something else? So the defendant asked her what she was talking about. And she said she would give him the best BJ that he had ever had. What fant <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> this is, a, this is his defense. <laughs> you can't make it up. He, this is his defense. He gets on the stand and, and says this. It spins the story that she said, wow, 200 is too much to clean your house. I mean, I, you're being too kind. What I'll do is give you the best PJ you've ever had. That would be a good deal. The defendant stated that he could not turn down this offer. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's so absurd. You think of him on the stand. I would love to have seen the cross-examination of this idiot. And he said, so then he says, and after she gave him that BJ, he told her that he was not going to be able to pay her the 200 until later because he did not have the money with him. He stated that at this point, the mother smacked him in his nuts. Oh, wow. Poor guy. And the defendant testified that he got mad and chased him out of the house with his stick. Okay. That's believable, dude. He's, I wonder how many hours the jury waited on the verdict here. He stated that he made the stick with the attached nail and that he used it for protection because he does not believe in having guns. No, no. He believes in basalts, crack, and assaulting women, but guns? No, 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 no. He stated that the two women ran out of his house screaming crazy stuff like, okay. The defendant testified that he never held the stick in a threatening manner and that he never hit anyone with the stick. The defendant stated that after the incident, he put the stick under the porch because he was afraid that the cops would think he used it against the victims. 
When the cops pulled up, he was standing outside on his back porch smoking a cigarette. The poor, innocent guy. The defense also presented testimony that Daniel Rexford, the defendant's wife, and Kenneth Washington, Daniel and Kenneth Washington, Daniel testified that in February 1st, 2012, she left her house to get dinner from McDonald's. As she was leaving, she saw two women approach the house, but stated that she did not know what they were coming over for. Daniel came back to the house when she got a phone call from the defendant, who told her that he was about to get arrested for sexual assault. She stated that the defendant did not have $200 on the date of the incident because she kept up with all of their money. Is she really standing on his behalf at this trial? Are you serious? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Daniel identified the stick and stated the defendant made it. She testified that the stick is usually kept in the bedroom for protection because she does not believe in having a gun in the house with children. Kenneth Washington testified that on the eve, right, because a one and a half year old. Yeah, okay. Anyways, Kenneth Washington testified that on the evening of February 1st, 2012, both of the victims came over to his mother's friend's house and told him about the incident, even though he was no longer dating JL. They told Kenneth that while they were folding clothes for the defendant, he came in the room holding a bat with a nail in it, said he was going to assault them, and then pulled out his and began. Yeah, I'm just, if you want to see what that says, you can go read it. I'm not saying it. Kenneth testified that DL never indicated to him that she gave the, I, um, has a reputation of being untruthful times. So now they're trying to victim, you know, shame or whatever. I don't know what they're, but anyways, he was found guilty and, uh, Um, excessive sentence. He part of his appeal, excessive sentence. He's 12 years is extensive considering he's a first time felony offender, always worked to support his family and had two very young children who depended upon his support. Also, the defendant claimed that he was an isolated event, noting that the victim admitted this was out of character for the defendant, and the victim was an adult, not a child, or someone mentally or physically impaired, and that this was a single act of oral as opposed to, oh, okay, really, which did not result in lasting harm or injury. Um, no, first of all. And finally, the defendant argues that his sentence is excessive when compared with other forcible assault cases. And he cites several cases, and then they, they talk about the different cases where people got less sentences. And you really don't want to read this stuff because it's really just disturbing at what light sentences some of the people who he stated got. But yes, Louisiana does give light sentences for similar crimes. And this was a light sentence. It's 12 years. So I, I'm going to go... Um, and just start to say again that I know I've said it, you know, what, 20 times already. But how do you have a jury trial? You decide to do it for one offense. The jury finds him guilty and you still only give a 12-year sentence. I don't know if there's anyone that can watch this and say that makes sense to me. But to a judge, it did. And there's something really wrong with the system. There really is. It's broken. And uh, it's part of why we do this. Just. And Miss Jackson, man, she just she just took my breath away with her mic drop and only emphasizes the, the how serious some of these sentencing judges are. With that, I'll let you go. Yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC. <laughs> Justin, Justin Andon, uh, my DOC number is 439829. Thank you. Mr. Wise. Okay, Mr. Andon, there should be a pro revocation questionnaire form at the very bottom 
uh, I see where you did not sign it. What was the reason why you didn't sign it? Or, uh, I, uh, I got it signed, uh, Mr. Wise, right here. Okay, if y'all would, let them hold it up there and make sure that we have the information. See if y'all hold it up close. Can the board members see that where it's been signed from Ms. Justin and Andy? The warning. Yes. Yes, uh, they they sent a copy uh, yesterday or day before of it being signed uh, at a later date. So it's in our packet. Well, I see it. I see where it's been signed at a later date, but it didn't have his signature on it. That's what I see that. I've got it right here, but it didn't have his signature. It had a witness, Amanda Peoples, but it didn't have his signature on it, one that I, that I have. But at this time, I see that you have, and, and uh, did you request for any kind of counsel of any kind? Uh, no, sir. You didn't have no account, no uh, counsel. So I'm going to read you out your rules, violation, your plea, guilty or not guilty, or guilty with a statement, not guilty. Rule number four, you tested positive and admitted to the use of illegal narcotics uh, for methamphetamines on 5-1-21 and 6-9-21 and 7-8-21. Guilty or not guilty? Uh, guilty. Rule number eight, you failed to attend intensive outpatient treatment after being instructed to do so. Guilty or not guilty? Uh, one of them, uh, Mr. Wise, I had went to before I had. Uh, okay, but I need a, I need the one here, the intensive outpatient treatment after being instructed to do so. Did you guilty or not guilty? Uh, guilty. Okay, rule number 10. You have a supervision fee rate of $126 you signed a payment agreement to pay $63 per month, supervision fees, fail to submit any payment, guilty or not guilty? Uh, guilty with a uh, statement, I guess. Okay, guilty with a statement? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, number 13, special conditions is sex offender contract. You failed to attend sex offender counseling after being instructed to do so, guilty or not guilty? Uh, guilty with a statement. Thank you very much. At this time, Ms. Uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Jackson will be asking you some questions. This case has been assigned to her. Yes, sir. All right. Good morning, Mr. Anding. How are you doing? Okay. okay. Uh, I've reviewed your case, and it's obvious that you have a significant drug abuse history. Ma'am. Uh, you were released on good time parole and then immediately went back to using meth. No, uh, oh. Okay, let me just, just finish, all right? And in spite of that, uh, you, you, you had numerous occasions where you were using meth. And in spite of that, your probation officer didn't seek to revoke you. They tried to help you. They sent you to Blue Waters, Walters, and you completed that program, but then they wanted you to do an intensive outpatient program because of the severity of your addiction, and, and you chose not to do that. Can, can you tell us why you did not follow through on that treatment? Yes, ma'am. She never sent me to Blue Waters. Well, she, uh, when she first come up here, she signed that I go to Blue Waters, but then she come with, withdrew that from me and told me that she's going to push to violate me. Okay, hold on. Let me let me go back to uh, what I saw. Okay. You went to a sober living facility, correct? Yes, ma'am. When I pro when I proed out of uh, prison, I went to a uh, well, it's a free and D house. It's it's a uh, but you, but you continue to use uh, meth and other drugs in that program. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. But I mean, it's it's it, it's no classes there, Miss. Uh, okay, I'm at the sober living house. You tested positive for drugs, correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. Well, I I never test positive. I went to the guy that run the house and uh told him that. Well, I did. I, I told him I was dirty for meth, and that I wanted. I'm, to I'm looking at an, a failed drug screen on June the 9th, of 
21. Also, you were ref you you were sent to a 28 day treatment program, but you refused to go as instructed. Is that correct? Oh, Ma'am, I went I went graduated. I got my certificate. I went and graduated uh, New Day Recovery. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, she would my parole officer wouldn't let me leave the house. The house was full of drugs. I couldn't get away from it. You know, I'm an addict, you know, I couldn't get away from the drugs. Okay, but, but Mr. Mr. Andy, yes, every sober living house is full of drug addicts. Yes, That's why they're there. Yes, and so, you know, yeah, there are people in the sober living houses who do drugs. Yes, and I mean, you have to. Okay. Uh, so the director of the sober living facility contacted the probation officer and said that you were still using drugs in the sober living facility. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so they went to the residence on July 9th, 21 and instructed that you report to the Monroe District Office of Probation and Parole. And when you got there, you admitted that you have been using meth. Is that correct? Is that correct? Okay. Um, and then you were arrested for a parole violation and booked into prison. But in lieu of replication, they wanted to send you to Blue Walters, but the program was canceled due to COVID. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, but nevertheless, you do admit that you tested positive for meth in May, June, and July. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the sex offender treatment. Were you ordered to go to sex offender treatment? Uh, well, when I first got out, uh, that that would be a yes or no. Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you go to sex offender treatment? Uh, no, ma'am. It was never, never. I mean, she told me that it was up to me to to uh set to the what? to set the uh, counseling up. Did you? Set it up? No, ma'am. I mean, I didn't know why. Uh, I didn't know how to I find it really hard to believe that the probation officer would not give you specifics on the program. Yes, I've never heard of a probation or parole officer telling you, well, you go out and you find this program. I, you know, I'm not going to help you. You go out and find some sex offender. Normally, there's one offered through probation and parole. Yes, ma'am. What is the sex offense that you're on probation for? I'm not. On parole. I'm not on parole for no sex offense. Well, then why were you ordered to go to sex offender treatment? They, 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 uh, well, she told me I had to start my, re uh, I had to re-register as a sex offender. My, I completed my time on that sex well, charge. But my point is you have a sex offense, correct? You were convicted of a sex offense at some point in your career, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. What is that sex offense? Uh, coronal knowledge of the juvenile. And because of that, she told you you needed to complete sex offender treatment. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. But you didn't do that either. No, ma'am. Okay. Well, well, I didn't. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't have. During the time that she told me, uh, that's when I had got put into the uh, rehab facility. Okay. And they wouldn't, and they wouldn't let you leave uh, to go to sex offender counseling no. meetings. I was in an inpatient rehab. I can't. Well, what about rehab. when you were in the sober living house? Well, that's whenever she told me right before I went to rehab because she checked my folder because I had completed it when I lived in Leesville. Uh, I went to a guy named John Hewitt. He's over sex offenders, and uh, he's a counselor. And I completed it whenever I was on parole and uh. Uh, Vernon Parish, and uh, so she said she was going to check into it. Then she got back with me and told me that I was going to have to go. But I mean, when as soon as I got out of uh, the sober living, I mean, uh, the 
new day recovery to 28 day rehab. I got locked up like right after. I don't yeah. have, I don't, I don't have a problem with going. I don't really, I, I went one time and completed it and paid all my money and everything. I don't, it's not the problem. I just could, I was trying to get away from the house, try to get away from the drugs and I do it. How long have you been in jail on this probation, parole, or violation? I think the, the ninth will be four, I think it's four months. I, uh, I had got me a bed into another a rehab that they were supposed to have faxed y'all paper. I don't know if they did, but they have a bed, bed waiting on me and another sober, a different sober living house. Well, what would be different there? Because you're going to be with people who use drugs. Well, because I've had the chance to be in here and get back clean and not, you know, I had the chance to sit here and, and get clean and get my thoughts together and go to the one I'm going to go to is a faith based one to where I'll be going to step study every night and see or, you know, I have something to occupy my time. And what's the, what's the name of that facility? Uh, Broken Wings. Uh, I have the lady's name right here for y'all. Uh, it's Broken Wings. It's in Abasta, Louisiana. Uh, the, the phone number is 318. I don't need that. I'm not going to be calling uh, Ms. you. Uh, her name's Miss Betty Ballard. And she's told you that there's a bed available for you there? Yes, ma'am. And you want to go? I would, I would love to go. Yes, ma'am. Why? Because I want to get my life right. I have two beautiful little girls, and it's just not the life I want to live. I'm not a troublesome person. I just I have a drug addiction, and I want to try to understand and how to get over that drug addiction. I'm not. I mean, I do little stuff that gets me incarcerated, but it's behind being on drugs. And that first that rehab, that 28 day rehab, is the first rehab I've ever had an opportunity to go to to try to get my life right. In all the, the 15 years that I've, I've done behind in prison, it's only, I mean, I'm not even from here. I changed my location to, to stay here in Monroe, Louisiana, to where I could try to get away from that. To where I could try to get away from that environment, you know, and I know it's everywhere, but, you know, I just, I won't, you know, I've got a guy that's willing to help me, you know, he, I got to have a job waiting. For I have a guy that's got a job waiting on me, you know, uh, he's kind of, graduated too. What kind of job? Uh, construction. He graduated through the sober living houses. He speaks at the rehabs and stuff. Uh, I have his phone name and phone number too. Uh, I have some, I have some foundation behind me that's willing to help me in any way possible. You know, I just ask it, you know, I get the chance to try to, you know, it's not what it's not what I want to do. I want to raise my kids. I want to be there for my kids. And where are your children? They're in uh one of them lives in Pickin, Louisiana, and one of them lives in Rose Pine, Louisiana. And where are you from? I'm from Pickin, Louisiana, Leesville, La Leesville uh area. Uh, is there anything else you want to say, uh, Mr. Andy? Um, no, I just want to ask, you know, if any way possible, y'all could please, you know, give me a chance and let me try to go through this, let me go through this rehab and go through this different sober living house. And I'll prove to y'all that I can do it right. I don't have a problem going to sex offender counseling. You know, I went and registered. I, I paid all my dues, paid for all my registering and everything, you know. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I work. I just want a chance, you know, not only to prove to myself, that, but, you know, mainly to prove to myself that I can do it. But for my kids, too, you know, I have some people that's willing to stand, stand behind me now and help me in any way possible. You know, go to 12 step. I'm going to be going to uh, NA 12 step and see our recovery. I just ask that y'all give me a chance to do it, you know, and I can prove that I can. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Andy. Uh, that's all the questions I have. You're, you're muted, Mr. Wise. At this time.
time, Mr. Andy, anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? Um, I just ask that you know, y'all give me a chance to go to rehab and go to this faith based program that does 12 step and you know, and give me a chance to prove that I can do what's right. And you know, I can. I can stay sober, and I know now that I can if I go, you know, as long as I go to the faith-based rehab and keep my mind in the Bible and stuff that I can do is right. I understand. Justin, you're uh, I'm, I'm saying you need some substance abuse. I don't know if the uh, outpatient would be the thing for you right now, being a fourth offender. That's, that's just me saying right now, but we'll vote at this time, starting with Miss Bonnie Jackson. Uh, Mr. Wise, can can I ask for an executive session to discuss confidentiality? Uh, yes, ma'am. I concur. Okay, at this time, Mr. Anning, uh, the board will be voting, starting with Ms. Bonnie Jackson. You're muted, Ms. Jackson. Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Andy, even though I find that you have violated the conditions of your probation, in lieu of revoking you, I'm going to order that you uh, enroll in and complete the Steve Hoyle long-term substance abuse program through uh, DOC, and then upon completion of that, be returned to supervision. Uh, Ms. Pearl. Uh, Mr. Justin, uh, I'm very concerned about you. Yes, I think I'm more concerned about your girls than you're concerned about your girls. Yes, ma'am. Because uh, you, you didn't make it a year out. Yes, ma'am. And you got those girls you're concerned about. My vote is that you, uh, your supervision be revoked and, uh, and your original sentence be imposed. And I wrote with a recommendation that you be placed in long-term substance abuse treatment prior to your release. Best wishes to you, sir. At this time, I'm gonna vote to, do, uh, to in lieu of revocation, that you go to the Steve Hall Intensive Program long-term. Board decision today was to, uh, uh, in lieu of revocation, the Steve Hall Intensive Drug Program. Thank you. Thank you. Now these, I know I'm putting these hearings together at the same time, but they, they took place like two weeks apart, or 10 days apart. But it, it is interesting to see how in some case, it's, it's hard to understand how in some cases, uh, you know, Miss Jackson sees it one way, Miss Wise sees it another. And, you know, I was actually surprised, uh, Jim Wise, well, so it's in lieu of revocation to send him to Steve Hoyle. So they're basically, instead of just revoking him and sending him back to his original sentence, which is what Ms. Wise wanted to do, they were saying, you're going to go to the substance abuse program for nine months, and then you get to, to, to go out. I, I don't know how much time he was backing. Um you know, Richard had found a little bit of information, but it's not, you know, it shows in 2015, he was locked up for stealing an ATV. Then in his, uh, for his original juvenile charge, it was in 2001 that he was convicted and he was about 21, 22 years old. Um, so his victim, uh, I think under the statutes in Louisiana would have been uh, 13 years old to a 16. So yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Uh, no matter any of those ages. Right. Um, but, and he served six years because it's Louisiana. That's all you get is six years, but still it's quite a lot for, uh, that type of charge. So you, you don't know, it could have been much worse than, you know, it could be that he pled down to it to, uh, just the juvenile and that it was worse, but who knows? Um, I thought it was a really, really, really bad interview. I mean, the guy just had excuses for everything. It was like, it was 
pretty ridiculous. We've seen people get revoked for less. Um, I would have been fine with the revocation, frankly. But he uh, he is out, and he stayed out. He's still out. So maybe he somehow did get his act together. Uh, for me, frankly, I'm shocked. I, I didn't think that he had... You know, that's this hearing took place in November 2021. This is almost three years later, and he seems to have not gotten locked back up. I mean, is it possible that Steve Hoyle actually helped someone? Um, I am a little surprised, but let's do one final hearing and we'll call it a night. We're classified as a second felony offender. Offenses, attempted simple escape type 1, forcible rape. Sentencing dates, February 20th, 2009, and January 23rd, 2002. Sentence a total of 24 years. Call date is May 19, 2021. Good time, not eligible. Full term, December 24th, 2024. This is information correct, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Jackson. Good afternoon, Mr. Lewis. How are you? All right. Uh, I'll be leaving the questions this afternoon. I've reviewed your file. I, I've uh, seen a lot of uh, information about you and about the case, but there are a couple things I do want to ask you. Uh, how old are you right now? 47. 47. And how much time have you actually served on this sentence? Next month be 21 years. Okay. And so you were, what, 26 or so when this incident, uh, 26 or so when this incident happened? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, the um, victim in this case was, uh, 11 years old at the time. Um, and one of the things that I saw, uh, I don't know whether it was in one of the previous reports or in the offense report, but that you place blame uh, on the 11 year old, that she called you into her room to look at a computer or fix a computer and she came in onto you and and in your weakness, you gave in to her. Uh, do you still stand by that statement, Mr. Uh, Lewis? No, ma'am. Okay, tell, tell us what happened then. After the Christmas party, we went home and my girl had some family members come over and we all was highly intoxicated. We was drinking at the party a lot. And later on at night, I went in the room and I forced myself on. Well, I'm glad to hear that you've dropped the, the claim that this little girl was responsible for what happened. Uh, you're currently enrolled in sex offender treatment, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. How long have you been in the sex offender treatment program? No, I enrolled in it. Uh, the pandemic had hit and the class had shut down by the pandemic. Well, how, how long did you attend before it shut down? I wasn't in it. I was at Winfield. They didn't have their class. So you, you've never, you've never actually participated in the sex offender program. Ma'am. Okay, yeah. because I had, I had an, ins, uh, an indication that you were currently enrolled in it, but maybe you're just on the list to take it. Is that correct? Ma'am, on backlog. Okay. Uh, Warden, any idea when that class might be available for him? Uh, we're, uh, we should be starting it back up uh, in the next few months. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be important, Mr. Lewis, that you complete the sex offender treatment program. Uh, because also I have an indication um, that you're alleged to be the father 
of a child who was born to a young lady who was 14 years old at the time uh, of your relations with her. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So do you see a problem, you know, with an 11 year old girl and a 14 year old young lady? Do you see that as being a problem? Yes, ma'am. And do you feel like you need to address, you know, those issues, why you're attracted to young children? Yeah, I try every day to work on it. And I'm trying. Well, and I understand that. And but sometimes we need help. You know, sometimes we need tools and we, we need some understanding of the problem, you know, from your point of view. But have you ever thought about that 11 year old child and how your actions might have affected her life? Yes, ma'am. How do you how do you think they might have affected her? It, probably, it might affect her in a strong way by destroying her life, traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm, glad, I'm glad you recognize that. Um, you have a low risk assessment. Uh, it's been over 10 years since your last write up in 2011 and that was for defiance do you remember that yes ma'am what was that what did that involve that was a uh, defiance it was a low court fight yes what kind of i'm sorry i had a fight with who uh, another inmate okay well how did you get ridden up for defiance because there's a specific one for fighting so how did you get written up for defiance? They dropped it and, and put me in, oh, you talking about that dead right up. Okay. I had got into it with an officer, but it, it wasn't, I was trying to leave out the kitchen because I was working in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want out, so I went and sat down. And we had some words and she wrote me up. You know? mm -hmm. They wrote me up a horseplay, but they dropped it down to a defiance. Okay. All right. Um, are you in a, you, you work in a garment factory? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. Uh, garment factory consists of making clothes, uh, boxes, jackets, jeans, shirts, and socks. That's, and that's yeah. inside the institution? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're pretty good with that, I understand. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's something you enjoy doing? Yes, ma'am. And what are your plans uh, when you do get released? Where do you plan to live? Uh, where do you plan to work? Right now, I have a job waiting on me right now because my sister, she's a manager at a mm -hmm. store. She's going to have me work in the warehouse. And I plan to live with my mother, you know. What about substance abuse treatment? Do you think that's something that you need? Yes, ma'am. I had took the pre-release program and had substance abuse programs on there too. And I, mm -hmm. I need that. Okay. Um, you know, it's not your fault that you haven't been able to get into the sex offender treatment. And I do, um, commend you for taking the programs that were available to you like pre-release and for being a good worker because that's you know that's a good thing you, you've got a lot of letters of uh, support and and you know commendation from um, the ones who oversee your work and so that's a good thing um Warren, is there anything else you can tell us about Mr. Lewis? No, ma'am, I don't have anything to add. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for talking with us today, Mr. Lewis, and that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I see no other questions here at this time. Uh, if anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? Yes, sir. I would like to say what I did was wrong, and I own up to my mistake, what I've done. 
And by owning up to it, it makes me every day to become a better person and being around positive people, doing positive things, staying away from the negativity and working hard at what I do. Any job I work at, I work hard. You know, and I'm trying every day to change and be a better person. I'm no longer that person that I was before 21 years ago. And I, and I wrote a letter to the victim, apologizing, asking for forgiveness, that I'm sorry for what I've done. If I destroyed your life, please forgive me because I own to my mistake. And that's what I got to deal with till the day I die. And I'm ashamed of what I've done. And I just pray that they forgive me. Okay. Just, thank you. Thank all. you very much. At this time, Ms. Bonnie Jackson, we voting. All right. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I was very uh, impressed by a lot of the things that you said today. I think you have grown a lot. You've, you've come a long way. Um, and, and I commend you for that. But I think uh, it would be um, negligent of us to release you without your having completed the sex offender treatment program. Uh, I think you know that's what you need, and I think uh, you know otherwise you would be a good candidate for a release. Because I really was impressed by the things you said today. I'm sorry that you weren't able to enroll, but I'm going to encourage you that as soon as it becomes available, that you take advantage of those. Um, that, that program, and then right back. You know, after you've completed that program, right back. And you know, hopefully the outcome will be different. But today, because you haven't had the sex offender uh, treatment, my vote today is going to be to deny. But I want you to keep your head up, keep working hard, stay positive, and uh, things will work out for you. Good luck to you. Tony, Mr. Tony Marabella. Uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, you, I, I agree with Judge Jackson. You've done very well, but you need the sex offender treatment program. You were denied in 2019, and one of the reasons was that you didn't do the sex offender program. Have you been trying to get into that program and just couldn't get in, or what? I'm on the list for backlog right now. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know what we can do to help you get into that program, but I certainly would recommend that we, uh, uh, we, we try to facilitate your getting into the program because you've done very well up other than that. And, but I do think it's critical that you take that program. So uh, I'm going to encourage you to do it. And Warden, if we can somehow help through our board to help get him in a program we certainly would like to do that so um yes sir it, it should be starting back we're, we're slowly getting all our programs and stuff up and running so it shouldn't be long okay. before he gets back good gets back. good well good luck to you uh mr lewis thank you okay at this time i'm gonna be voting tyrone you know i voted to make sure that you go get a, a sex offender treatment there and that's what I want. You got to have all four phases before you have a chance to get out. You have strong victim opposition and you have some good things about it, but you've got to get this sex print from. So the day that my vote is to the night. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. I hadn't seen this before. We just watched it together and can you imagine? I mean, he gets a 24-year sentence, which is a lot for Louisiana, right? Forced himself on an 11-year-old. At the time, he actually says that she came on to him. But then we find out that he impregnated a 14-year-old. So I, I just have to ask, why does he have one felony? Why does he have one sentence? Why?
would you not charge him for the second offense of impregnating a 14-year-old? It makes no sense. This guy is dangerous. You can't just forget the fact that he that he at 20 however old he was forced himself on a 24 year old. I'm sorry, on an 11 year old. I mean, he's been doing this to little kids his entire life, probably. That would be my guess. And what do you th think he's going to do when he gets out? Why wouldn't you sentence him on... Yeah, I mean, you had the DNA! You don't need to have a trial. You don't need to do anything. You just have to go and charge him. But they don't. And the only thing I can think of why you don't is because you don't care there's no information on this case that we have there's nothing but i just wanted to again go over the statutes and now this statute is as, as of 2006 so i don't know what it was when he got sentenced but here it says that those who commit forcible sexual assault should not receive less than five years. Can you imagine that five years is the minimum? No more than 40. At least two years without benefit. of. So you can, you know, th that's how strict they are, right? The judge could say five-year sentence, parole eligibility after two years. The judge can do that according to the legislation. Why? I have no idea. It's madness. But... They didn't. I mean, they gave him probably a plea deal, gave him 24 years. But why would you not? I don't get it. You know? It just doesn't make any sense. Someone who does that has to be locked up for life. Let's see. He's 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 about to turn 50 years old. And he served almost 24 years of the sentence. So he was like 24, I guess, about 20-something in his 20s when he uh, did this to an 11-year-old and when he impregnated a 14-year-old. He is still locked up, but, you know, he, he is almost finished his sentence. This hearing took place in 2001, so he's going to be getting out any day now. So just be aware mm -hmm. of that. You know, you really think that people are safe, really? You think that children are safe? You think because he'll take some programs that he'll now understand that it's a wrong thing to do after a Christmas party? Go into an 11-year-old? I mean, just you, you just can't. These are things that, that can... <laughs> I, it just doesn't make sense to anyone who would think things rationally. And um, that's the most bizarre part about it. The, the people who write our legislation, are they really, those are really our lawmakers? The DAs that allow these deals, the judges? I mean, you, you have he, he, you have DNA. You can, you can go to trial and you can go and give him the maximum sentence. And you cannot give me one reason why not to. But there you have it. Thank you for being here. I know it's tough just to listen to this craziness. And But um, if we didn't, we would just be as sticking our head in the sand like everyone else. And you can't do that. With that, I'll let you go.